In today's video, we're going to be creating a method in Geometry Nodes to make countdown videos from any number that you want without having to sit and type in all of the numbers manually as we did in this video over here. Of course, the techniques in this video were completely different and is definitely worth checking out. But until you do that, we'll go ahead and figure out how to do this in Geometry Nodes. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change it from the 3D viewport to the Geometry Node editor. Now we'll press this plus button to create a new Geometry Node tree. We'll zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now the main idea is that we want the countdown to change independent of how many digits we type in. So what we'll do is we'll use a scene time node and essentially use the seconds value to control the countdown or in my case it'll be a count up and if you want it to be a countdown all you do is reverse the video after rendering it. So let's go ahead and search for a math node and we'll change this from add to divide so that we can divide the seconds by a value of two so that we get the countdown to change every two seconds. Now the reason I want it to change every two seconds is so that there's some amount of time to register the number. Of course, you can keep this at one itself if you don't want it to be like that, but I'm going to divide it by two. Now, I don't want the numbers to go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on and so forth. I want it to remain as zero and then one and then two and just stay on those numbers for the entire duration until it changes to the next number. So to keep it at the smallest value, I'm going to search for another math node and I'm going to change the type from add to round or I'm going to keep it as floor so that it remains as zero till two seconds have passed and then it switches over to one and then after two seconds it switches over to two and so on and so forth. Now the problem is this is currently just a value but we need it to be a string so let's search for a value to string node and plug this value into the value and now we still can't plug the string into the geometry because the string is not a curve so we'll search for a strings to curve node and then plug the string into the string. Now if we plug this curve instance into the geometry and we actually run the animation we should be able to see that after two seconds it's going to change to a value of one and then two and three and so on and so forth. Now the next thing that I want is to actually fix the font. So I'll go ahead and open the fonts over here and select the font that I want. I'm using Bleak Segments, which is a free font available on different font websites, but you can definitely use any other fonts. It'll all look pretty good. Then I'm going to change this from left to center and I'm going to change the top baseline to also middle. But the problem with Bleak Segments is that the middle is not really at the middle. It's towards the base, but that's all right. We'll just center our camera differently later on. The next thing that I want is this particular curve should actually start appearing and disappearing as the count down happens. So I'll search for a trim curve node and plug that in right after the strings to curve. Now you see if you change the start value, it changes. And since I want to automate this entire thing, I need the start value to change according to the scene time over here. Now we know that the start goes from zero to one and when it's at one, it's going to be completely gone. And when it's at zero, it's going to completely appear. Otherwise we take this end value and when we reduce this to zero, it becomes completely gone. And when the end value becomes one, it appears again. So we'll animate the appearance of this using the end value. And the way we'll do that is we'll search for a math node and we'll set this to modulo. Now remember modulo gives the output after division. So in this case, if we have a value of two over here, whatever value comes in here, it's going to be divided by two and whatever remainder we get after that division is what we're going to get as the output. So let's plug this scene time node into the first socket. And now the seconds will be divided by two and the remainder is what we'll get. So this socket is going to come out with a value of zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way till two. And then it's going to go right back to zero the moment it hits 1.99999 or whatever. So it goes from zero to 1.9. So let's plug this into the end socket. And remember the end only goes till one. So anything after one will just get clipped off and it'll remain. So in this case, it should start off from zero. After one second, it'll completely appear. Then it'll remain for one second and then get cut off again. So let's see how it goes. So it becomes zero. It stays for a second and then it disappears. Now it becomes one then it becomes two and then it becomes three. Now that's great, but I don't want it to start forming as soon as the second appears. So to change the interval from which it starts appearing and the interval from which it disappears, we can search for a map range node and actually range this according to what we want. Now the two min and two max is going to remain at zero and one, but we can play around with this from min and from max to actually change the time at which it appears and the time at which it disappears. So if we change the from min to let's say one, what will happen is it won't start until one second is passed. And we also have to change the from max to two. And now if you actually see, it's going to remain with an output of zero until this output reaches a value of one. So it's going to remain non-existent until one second. And after one second, it starts appearing. And then the moment it appears, it disappears again because it goes back to a value of zero. So that is how we can get control over what time or what duration this thing appears and disappears. Now, obviously I don't want it to be like this. So what I'll do is I'll change this 
from max to something like one and i'll change the from min to maybe 0.5 so that way for the first half a second nothing happens then within the next half second it appears and then it remains for one second so this is exactly what's happening and i think this looks good enough because after this i want it to also disappear in the same way so to make it disappear we'll actually use this start value and start increasing the start to one so for that we have to use another map range node so we can select this and press shift d to duplicate it and then plug this value into the value and plug this result into the actual start of the trim curve node but we don't want it to be the exact same values remember we want this to start at a value of zero and end at a value of one but we want it to happen only after the letter forms and remains for half a second so since the letter completely forms at a value of one we want this start value to start changing half a second after that which will be at a value of 1.5 and the from max will change it to two and that way you'll see it takes half a second to start forming the letters and then it forms the letter within half a second then the letter or the number i should be saying number the number remains for half a second and then the number disappears in the next half second so that is the animation that we get which is exactly what i wanted now this is good for the time being but we don't want it to remain in the exact same scale we want it to appear like this size is increasing and then decreasing again or at least it should just keep increasing in size so what we do is we search for a transform geometry node plug that in and we can take this seconds or the value right after the modulo and plug that directly into the scale so now if you actually watch it it looks like the actual letters are appearing and getting bigger or in another sense it actually looks like it's coming in towards the camera that's something that it looks like and i think that's what i want so now that i have that set i actually need to give this particular curve some actual thickness because if you switch off overlays nothing can be seen so to convert this to a real mesh we can press shift a and search for a curve to mesh node and plug that in after the transform geometry for the profile curve i'll press shift a and search for another curve circle and then i'll just plug curve into the profile curve now the radius is way too high so i'll decrease the resolution to something like 5 and i'll change the radius down to 0 0.005 and now it has some radius as well now that we have this set what we want is there should be some other curves that also pass around this to give it an electric feel so to add in those electric curves i'll go ahead and press shift and search for a join geometry node so that we can have both this base curve as well as the electric curves and to actually get the electric curves i'm going to use the same curve and just manipulate it a bit before plugging it into the joint geometry so the way we're going to manipulate it is by initially plugging it into the joint geometry and searching for a set position node and plugging that in now remember the set position is not going to work how we want because right now these are instances and every instance moves together so if i was to search for a noise texture to move it randomly and plug the color into the offset you'll see the entire thing moves together to get control over the individual points of this curve we can search for a realize instances node and plug that in just before the set position node and that way we get control over individual points and then the noise texture works according to how we actually would expect it to work but there is another issue with this and that's the fact that these curves might not have equal spacing so to give them equal spacing we can actually shift all of this to the side and even before the trim curve node itself we can search for a resample curve node plug that in over here and just increase the count to something like 100 and that way the spacing will be perfectly even and you can actually see the difference if we just mute this this area we get a really long straight line because there are no points within here but there are multiple points here which is why we get a lot of turns in this particular region a lot of turns in this particular region but we don't get them in these areas so if we resample it it becomes much more smoothly distributed and you get nice curves everywhere next up you can see clearly these points are moving randomly up towards the right and that's because the noise texture is centered around 0.5 and not around zero to bring it centered around zero we search for a vector math node and plug it in after the noise texture and change this from add to subtract and subtract a value of 0.5 on all of the axes next we go ahead and increase the scale up so that it becomes fairly random and the effect is too strong so to reduce the strength we search for another vector math node and this time we change it from add to scale and on the scale we change the value down to something like 0.02 and it should reduce now 0.02 is way too low so i'll change it to 0.2 and that seems all right next when we actually play the animation we need these strings to also change its value and yes it is changing because of the scale but to give it even more randomness we can change this from 3d to 4d and take the frames from this scene time node and plug that into the w socket of the noise texture and that way even if the scale isn't changing these actual curves will keep changing and that'll make it look like it's some type of 
electricity that's forming around these curves. So now that we have these curves working fair enough, we actually need to convert this electric curve also into a mesh because if we switch it off, the electric curves disappear. So before the join geometry, I'll search for another curve to mesh node or I'll just select this, press shift D, plug it in here, take this curve circle, shift D and before plugging it in, I'll reduce the radius even further. So maybe 0.01 and plug the curve into the profile curve. I also feel like the strength is a little too large and that means not the scale value. I want to change the scale on the noise texture and not the scale node. So on the noise texture, I'll reduce this to maybe 40 or 30. And I think this looks a little better. So I'm going to keep it as is. Now I'm going to go ahead and set materials for the arcs and base separately. So I'll press shift A, search for a set material node and plug that in over here, as well as pressing shift D and plugging it in here. Now I need two separate materials. So I'll go to the material properties here. Press this plus button to add in a new material slot and press the new button to create a new material. Now I'll change the base material to base text and I'll change material 001 to sparks. Then over here, I'll select base text for this and I'll select sparks for this one. And with that, we can set all of our defaults and set up the scene. So for our defaults, we'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. And under bloom, I'm just going to clamp it down at five, after which I'll go to my output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change the end frame to the number that we want to count down from. So let's say I want to count till 10. I have to go 10 plus one because we're also including zero. So it's going to go zero to 10, which is a total of 11 numbers. So I can either type 10 plus one and then use brackets or I can directly type in 11. And then I want to multiply this into two. So I say start two. And the reason we're multiplying it by two is because each number is staying for two seconds. And now remember our frame rate is 30 frames per second. So we're going to type in another start 30. And that way we get the exact number of frames that we want. Every time you want to render it out, maybe you want to do a hundred different counts. You can go ahead and change this end frame to the appropriate value and you'll get the animation as such. Then I'll go to my output properties, change the folder to wherever I want it to be. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG4 and output quality, I'm going to keep as perceptually lossless. Then I'm going to switch my viewport shading to rendered so that I can see changes to the material, after which I'm going to change my geometry node editor to the shader editor. And I'm going to go to my world properties and change the background color all the way to black. Next, I'm going to go to my materials, select base text, select the principal PSDF and tap X to delete it. Then I'll press shift and search for an emission node and plug that into the surface. Next, I'm just going to change the strength to something like five. I'm not going to make this one too bright, but I'm going to give it a very slight bluish tint. Next, I'm going to select the sparks material, delete the principal BSDF and search for another emission node and plug this into the surface. But for this one, I'm going to increase the strength to something like 500 so that it's extremely bright and change it to a blue. Now, of course, remember that if we hadn't clamped the bloom value down at five, the actual bloom would have gone insane. So if you see if it's zero, there's way too much bloom. So if you're not clamping it, tread lightly with the strength value. Now that looks good enough for my numbers that are completed with electric sparks. Remember, you can always change the font to whatever you want. So I'll just show you what another font might look like. And this is the effect that it looks like with um, answer font. So this is, I guess, another effect that looks fairly decent. And it's up to you as to what effect or which font you want to go with. In my case, I'm going to be using bleak itself, but this is another viable option that you do have. Next up, we need to add in some more stuff to the background. So in my shader editor, I'm going to change the type from object to world. And what I want is some type of noise in the background. We've done this before. So definitely check out those videos as well, such as this one. But we'll redo it again over here as well. Let's search for a noise texture and a color ramp that we have more control over the noise texture. I'm going to plug the color into the factor and this color into the color of the background. Next, I'm going to increase the scale to something like 10. I'm going to increase the detail all the way up to 10. And I'm going to increase the roughness to maybe 0.8. Next, I'm going to start bringing the black in and I'm going to take this white, give it bluish color, but I'm also going to take the value of this and bring that down just above the black. So it's fairly dark. Next, I also want this background to keep dynamically changing so that it doesn't look like it's a static background. For that, I'm going to change the noise texture from 3D to 4D. And for the W value, I'll just type in a driver. I'll say hash frame by 2000 or 200. And that way it'll slowly change over time. Now, of course, you can see what speed suits you the best. What I'll do is I'll just switch off my cube for the time being and then play it back. But it's really hard to get a real time understanding of what this is going to actually look like because adding in so much of detail and roughness to the noise texture genuinely slows it down. So you have to make sure that you don't make it too fast or make it too slow. So play around with the frame value or the driver value and whatever you think suits the best is what you can go with. I think I had to go with a value of 2000 itself. Now to set up your camera, you 
can select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then press G Z and bring it back so that it's above the actual number that you have. Then once it's above, you can press zero to go into your camera view and then press G Z and just drag it in so that the number is perfectly centered when it's the largest. And beyond that, you have to actually make sure that the number is centered because some fonts like the one that I'm using does not actually have the center at the center. So I'm going to have to press G Y and move it so that it becomes fairly centered. And I think that's actually all there is for this animation. Remember at any point of time, if you want, you can add more things to the background, such as some spheres or something else. You can keep it as simple as you want or as complex as you want. It's really up to you. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and press render animation. Hopefully that one was interesting and you learned something with it. Of course, you don't have to use the same techniques for numbers. You could maybe type in your own name and add in this electric effect behind it. The applications are limitless and only limited by your imagination. So for that purpose, I'd suggest going through multiple videos on my channel and playing around with them to keep your creativity at its peak. I release videos every single day and tomorrow will be the 100th video released in 100 days. So I'm really excited for that one. Thank you so much for watching and until the next video comes out, keep creating and stay creative.